Hello. This is another update to my review of VSL's Bussendorfer 280VC. This would be part three, and if you haven't seen parts one and two, I'll go ahead and leave links in the description if you want to take a look at those. But I wanted to cover something in this review, in this update rather, I should say. VSL recently updated their software that runs their sample libraries, and the update is quite significant, and it really impacts the playability of the 280 VC. Of course, it will carry over to whatever VSL piano library you're playing. I'm just happening to highlight it in the context of the 280 VC because that is my favorite, currently my favorite VSL library to play. I'm going to talk just briefly about the updates and then demonstrate how I think it really impacts the playability of the piano. One of the things they introduced here is what they refer to as this half pedal editor. And what's new about this, this isn't necessarily a new feature in itself, but what is new, I've never seen anyways on these uh, on this piano software before, is that when you depress the pedal, you've got this little dot that will move with the pedal which is pretty neat. So if you depress the pedal all the way, the, the little dot moves all the way to the right, and if you lift the pedal up, it moves all the way back to the left. So you kind of know where you're at in the range. And then from there, you could adjust the entry point, the exit point, the window of the half pedal feature, how narrow and how wide it is. And that kind of graphic, that interactive graphic is really... Uh, novel in the sense because I haven't seen that before. It really adds precision to that update, which is pretty neat. So I like that. If you go to the play window here, they've actually added a feature which they refer to as this smooth attack feature. And you can increase the percentage all the way up to 100%. And what that does is as you increase the percentage when you hit, when you play the, the keys softly, it's almost like the hammers have been softened a little bit. So it just softens the attack. It's, it's not as direct and forward anymore. That's a nice feature too. But what I really want to focus on is, back in this edit window, the velocity curve editor. Now this is, an, is not a new concept. As a matter of fact, every, all the software that, I've, that I use to run virtual piano libraries all have velocity curve editors in them. And I always thought it was strange that uh, VSL did not have it. And if you wanted to utilize that and customize the, the touch of your controller with the software and synchronize it nicely with the software, you had to go to some third-party software solution. And I kind of lived with that, that imperfection, as it were, because VSL's samples were so wonderful. They're so authentic that I was willing to live with a certain level of imperfection without having a... Uh, velocity curve editor, but now they have it, and it is significant. And what's fun about it is that, which makes it, what makes it easy to use is it has this active histogram feature. So when you play, you could actually see, you know, wh what the values you are uh, inputting are at. Incidentally, I should mention, if you're not familiar with the way a velocity curve editor works, every time you depress a key, a, a number of values are sent to your computer, and one of those MIDI values is the velocity at which the key was depressed. So the faster the velocity of the key press, the more amplitude, the higher the volume you're going to get out of the, uh, out of the sample. The slower the velocity, the lower the volume. And it measures it in, uh, in increments, or actually from 0 to 127, in increments of 16. So if you look at this graph here, every vertical line represents 16. So it goes from 0 to 16 to 32 to uh, 48 to, to 64, etc. And you can go on and on all the way up to 127. So that makes it very helpful when you play the keys to kind of see where your natural touch is. What range are you playing in? I notice that when I play, I'm normally in the, my natural touch on the piano is about anywhere from 32 uh, to 72, which is um, uh, just about where my crossover point is. So what I've done is when I would play softly, I felt like I couldn't control the lower volume 
the lower dynamic range of the piano as well as I would like. So what I've done is from MIDI value zero all the way up to 72, I've attenuated the volume with a, with a gradual curve upward. So like if I, if I input a MIDI value of 16, I'm actually going to be putting out going to be outputting 11. If I input a value of 32, I'm actually going to be outputting 23. And I've kind of graduated it all the way up that way. When I'm at 64, when I'm inputting 64, I'm actually outputting 55, so it's a little bit softer. And then uh, at 72, I'm actually outputting 68, so I'm gradually decreasing the amount now of softness as I reach my crossover point, which is at 80. So at 80, when I input a MIDI value of 80, it puts out 80. Because I've noticed that 80 is where I really want to start capturing the louder volumes and getting more power out of the library. And this is where your controller, the uniqueness of your controller comes in. The Yamaha N1X has three touch sensitivities, and I keep it on the default medium touch sensitivity. And But on the medium default touch sensitivity, it really won't get above 108. It won't output more than 108 MIDI value. So if I just kept this curve stock uh, without enhancing it at all with any sort of velocity editor, I'd only be able to get a MIDI value of 108, 110, as comfortable as I feel hitting the keys that loud, that hard. But what I can do with this touch curve, just as I've attenuated the volume in the lower mid to lower register uh, MIDI value, I could increase the volume in the upper MIDI value register because I want to actually draw a little bit louder past 80. So once I get up to like, for example, 96, I'm actually, when I enter input 96, I'm actually outputting 107. And then if I go up, um, to um, 104, when I'm inputting 104, I'm actually outputting 100 and what is that, 16. And then, uh, of course, when I get to 112, I'm actually outputting 120, where is it, 122. But I generally don't even play that loud on this piano. I could go all the way up to 127 if I wanted, but uh, I find 127 is a very unnatural sound. It just doesn't sound like uh, an, the acoustic pianos that I've played. So the, about the loudest I'm getting out of this, the loudest that I want to get out of it, is in a range from 116 to 122. About 116 to 120 is, when, and that's when if I'm really, really uh, leaning into it. So I generally don't play that loud, but it's available to me if I want, and it's plenty loud enough tone-wise, I like it. So what I've done is I've softened the curve for the mid to lower velocities, and I've increased the curve for around 80 to the crossover point where I could actually draw from some of the higher MIDI values. So what I want to do is I want to play just a short excerpt from a song so that you can see uh, how we, how I can control, how it's easier, I guess I should say, for me to control the the lower velocities, and then we'll get to the crossover point, 80, and go and reach up and get some of those higher velocities and then come back down uh, to the lower to finish. So it's a very short excerpt, and I want you just to kind of hear the, the range going back and forth between uh, lower and higher, and then back to lower again. Have a listen. Okay, so 
with that curve, you can see I, I feel much more comfortable getting the softer sound out of it. I feel like I can control that lower dynamic better. And then when I want the higher uh, volume, the higher MIDI values, they're also available to me as well. So overall, it's given me more control over the piano, which I like, and it's tailored more to my, um, to my particular instrument and to my particular taste. So that's quite significant. And, you know, it, VSL's libraries were good before, but it was kind of like, you know, if you, if you ever gone, went to buy a suit, you, normally people buy suits off the rack. And if you take a suit off the rack, the pants and the jacket, and you try to match your size up, it, it looks okay, but it generally doesn't drape very nicely or it's not tapered in the right spots. So what you do is you have the tailor come over and they do all the measurements and they take their little chalk mark and mark up the suit and they custom tailor the suit to fit you perfectly so that when you go back, it's, it's exactly the way it should be and it feels good to wear it and you feel good, you look good wearing it, hopefully. And that's what it was like playing this VSL before they had these software updates. It was like wearing a suit off the rack. It looked good, but it just didn't fit perfectly. But we were willing, I was willing to endure the imperfection simply because the sample was so wonderful. But now, after these updates with the Velocity Curve Editor and the others, it's like wearing a fine tailored suit that's been custom just for you. And that's a beautiful thing, because now you have the wonderful authenticity in the samples themselves with the total custom, uh, customizing feature of these updates. So you can sculpt it precisely to your controller and to your preference. And again, that's a wonderful thing. So I think if you try out this software, you're going to be equally impressed with, uh, with the updates. And I think with these updates, what it does is it really, in my opinion, puts VSL pretty far out ahead of the competition. About the only thing that is a deterrent now is probably the cost for some people because the libraries, depending, you know, uh, uh, on your individual financial resources, they, they can be kind of costly. But it's so worth it for me. I just enjoy it so much. And now with this tailored custom fit that you can have with this wonderful sample library, it's exciting to sit down and play it. And I really look forward to it. The 280 VC is just uh, is a tremendous library to own. And I'm very happy to have it. And I'm really glad that... Uh, VSL listened to their customer base and added these updates because the Velocity Curve Editor was something people uh, had been asking for for quite a while. And now we've got it. So it's a wonderful treat, and I hope that uh, you get a chance to try it out. What a wonderful blessing it is. So I want to thank you for joining me again for this little update to my review of VSL's Bussendorfer 280VC. If you get a chance to try it out, I'm sure you're going to love these updates just as much as I do. Thank you for joining me for this review, this update, and God bless.